Assalamu alaikum. This is Brother Clifton Raheem Bradley. And you know what, man? I am excited. I have Minister Ben Wallace. And he has a podcast. And actually a YouTube. And you know what? And he's a mentor. He works in the community to uplift the community and to help young people. And this guy, man, this guy's now still, this guy's titanium. You go, I'm still, I met a, a bronze, but this guy's out to beat and destroy me. But you know what? <laughs> long time ago, <laughs> well, a long, so long time ago, I couldn't have been your friend. You know why? Because I was insecure. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't seen no insecure part of your body. <laughs> and you know what? Because he's confident and he's out to beat everybody and be better than everybody. I could not have been your friend a long time ago. Very low self-esteem. Yeah, I, 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 do, I do play to win. Uh, I do play to win. It would be a test to someone that's in the studio right now knowing that I would destroy her. So, yeah, uh, yeah she, uh, but I do play to win. But he's, he's thinking right now how to make his show better than this. I want y'all to know that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, you know, in, in, in a because being a former competitive uh, competitor, you know I have that competitive spirit in me. It's not personal; it's always business. Yeah. And um, no, it, it's uh, it's a pleasure for me to be on your show, man. It's always a pleasure to you be play, on your you show. You plan it off and being humble. <laughs> but, Humbleness is uh, part of it. All though. praises do not lie. But you know what? I want to ask you, Minister Ben. You know what? You podcast. But what was your journey, man? What, what, what did, didn't you originally take us to when you owned the football team? And what was, what was integral about it? What, what, how did you even own a football team on that level? Oh, oh, wow. <laughs> oh, um, well, as you know, I'm, I'm a former athlete. I've been doing this all my life. Mm -hmm. And so, I got to the position, uh, at, uh, went to high school, played ball, grammar school, high school, get to college, and I decided What college you go to? Northern, Northern okay, Illinois. Beautiful. Okay. And so at that time, you could just go try out for a professional, uh, professional football team. Mm -hmm. So I said, forget this, I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna leave college. I went two years at Northern, and I said, I'm gonna go try out for the Bears. So I tried out for the Bears. Wow. You know, I didn't make it. So then I went and tried out for the St. Louis Cardinals down there in uh, uh, St. Charles, uh, Missouri. Mm -hmm. Didn't make it there. And I went down to Swanee, Georgia to play uh, the trial for the Atlanta Falcons. Mm -hmm. So I went there and uh, I didn't make it there in a professional rank. So I went and came back home and got into the semi-pro ranks. I started yes, playing semi-pro for about four years. And I started looking at how it was being managed and everything. And... Um, and at a particular time, I decided, well, I'm going to retire mm -hmm. uh, because it was hard for me to to train and play football and work a nine to five job. So I decided to just retire and I started my own. I started my own uh, my own football team, my football organization. Mm -hmm. I did that for 10 years here in Chicago. Wow, I'm doing it and so uh, that what that's what kept me involved as far as that is concerned. So mm -hmm. that was. Um, Mm -hmm. That was a great task, and uh, it was great very business, interesting. Great business, man. You know, like, you know what, your podcast, I'm going to ask you about your podcast, because it is dynamite. You know what, anybody that looks at the Underground Railroad television show, I'm asking you to go to his YouTube website, and that'll be in the description on YouTube. But what, in, I know, I heard you mention your mother earlier, what inspired you? to even think about doing things that was connected to the community, being a mentor, and podcasting. I heard you mention your mother. They say, I'm doing a lot of paradise lies at that mother's feet. I heard you mention that. Yeah. Well, what, what, what's motivating you to do this? Is it money? Is it power? Is it fame? Are you just like Martin Luther King, you say, I just want to help somebody. What is it? Well, um, one day me and my mother was sitting down, I was watching TV, and. Mm -hmm. um, and was talking about different things and different stuff was going on and of course news is always a lot of tragic things happening and and I said Ma they should do this this can happen and blah what blah blah. What was your blah. mother's name if you don't mind? 
This is my mother's name right here, Francis uh, Francis Fay. Oh, That's wow. my mother. That's my mother. This, sh in fact, this shirt was uh, made by this young brother named Amron Amron Hammonds. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, his Instagram is is Amron Twenty Two, and you can go to uh, um, Ammo Productions. It's on all social we, media. We, we oh, so that that that's that's. Can't do no so I, okay. I got to do that uh, for him. But anyway, wait a minute, uh, y'all. Can I tell y'all something? I ain't up to the big leagues. He can advertise on this show. I can't yeah, advertise. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so uh, talking to my mom, she said, "Well, you know, you're telling me this. Why don't you tell the world this and and use your voice?" And I said, "Well, okay, I guess." And so that started me out to doing this and getting into. Uh, so I have watched your show because your show been on for many years, oh, and um, and I reached I reached out to you, oh, and God. and so during COVID, you know, during the COVID situation, I said, well, why don't I do a show? Mm -hmm. And why don't I do one? I was been inspired by my mom, oh, it's Francis Faye, and so that is the reason why um, I do this. It's her. My mom passed away a few years ago, and um, I, I'm inspired every time. Anytime I go do my show, I embody my mother, and then I take off and I go to the studio and do it. So that's why mm -hmm. I won't stop. I will. I will not stop because it's her instructions. Let me ask you something on your show. See, he's in a sense being preserved because he's. What's, what's your slogan? I'm unap. You gotta listen to his show because he's unapologetic and. Uh, un I, un I, he, his show is not like mine, but you know it's raw. Go ahead, brother. Yes. What, un what's your saying? Uncut, unapologetic, <laughs> straight with no chaser. That's how it is. That's how my show is. That's what it is. If you faint at heart, don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> Let me ask you something. How did you come up with that name for your show? And where can they find your show on YouTube and social media? Because you say it's unapologetic. People love to hear things. That are it, when it, it's wrong, <laughs> it ain't going ain't no cut on it. It's unapologetic. I'm not going to apologize for it. It's straight. Ain't no apple juice or nothing going in there. This stuff is going to burn your throat. Mm -hmm. Ain't no acetal on there. Ain't nothing on there. There's no hit. Nothing. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. Uh, you can you can uh, see the show. Uh, go to YouTube and, and go to Minister Ben Willis podcast on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Go to episode seventeen, and you can see this brother right here Praise who is on my show. <laughs> it's Must See TV. You gotta see it. It's Must See TV with him being interviewed. Okay. And uh, again, it's Minister Ben Willis podcast on YouTube. What what do you? When we, when we we talk about future endeavors and moving forward and not remaining in stagnation, what do you envision for your show in the future? And what subject matters have you talked about and discussed to let the audience know? Well, I talk about all types of different subject matters. My, it goes from uh, religion, it goes from sports, it goes from music, it goes from domestic violence, um, it goes from uh, relationships, it goes to the city. I have a plethora of subject matters that I, I talk about. And um, what I, I just want my show to be successful. I want to continue to keep getting out information. I want to continue to keep on doing what my mother, you know, instructed me to do. Mm -hmm. And whatever it is, and I let God lead me in that direction, and that's I what I do. I mean, do you do you sort of envision it going to mainstream television, satellite? Actually, it is on satellite on YouTube. What do you the endeavor to, as your show grows, what do you see in the future? Maybe you don't want to shed it. Well, you know, I want to reach as many people as I possibly can. I, you know, I want to reach as many people as I possibly can. And and that's what I you know that's what uh, and that's my whole goal right there. Um, whatever else transpired, what God wants me to have, I'm going to have. Mm -hmm. and what God don't want me to have, I'm not going to. I don't fret over any of that. You know. I got that. But you have to destroy me. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> you have been, you, you know what? It's one thing about what what gives you this compet. You are a competitive competitive person. 
And what gives you this motivation and this drive? I, I would say for me, not, you know, with different people, I'm not really competitive, competitive like that, but I know I'll get whatever Allah wants me to have. That's right. I put in the hard work. But what gives you this motivation to be so, you're a domineering person and you know what, and you're a leader and you don't mind helping people. What gives you this motivation? Well, it's did, you, um, did, did your mother and father install that in you? No, no, no. And you, you, I think you're just born with it because I always wanted to win. No one knows who came in second place. Mm -hmm. I always wanted to. I always wanted to win. You know, and and if you beat me in something, that game ain't never over. <laughs> I'm coming back. I'm coming back until I win. So, you know that that helps me. And it's never personal. It's just um, it's in that arena. And then afterwards, we're friends and we, you know, we can be cool again. But, yeah, I'm trying to get at you. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to get at your helmet for real. I, I know. Yeah. I know. You, you looking and watching and learning. I know. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> that's, that's what I'm doing all the time, man. Smart, man. I'm, you know something about your personality, and I would like for you to share this. What is the where you don't feel threatened? Whereas if you're helping someone to get up, like even if it's TV production, you don't feel threatened at all and don't feel insecure. How do you get to that point where you, you, I think your job is, you say is to lift somebody else. Right. How did you get to the point, that point where you don't feel insecure because that person is bigger than me, they know more. How do you get to that point? Because I know that there's someone greater than me. All praise is due. That's one greater than me. Mm -hmm. So I fear nothing but God's punishment. That's it. That's that's it. Because you know what I would say, I've seen you, you helped me. Yeah. The art, you know, with the disagreements that you, and I like our disagreements, but yeah. your disagreements that you have had, that me and you have had, you've helped me to grow. And you know what? And this is one of my ways of showing appreciation. Oh man, I, I, I you know, that. I appreciate our, our talks and stuff like that because it, you know, I'm you talking are, about the disagreements. That, that's it's what helped me that, to grow. That, that's it, it. Does the same thing with me because <laughs> it make it makes me sharp. It makes it makes me uh, go within and then start thinking about what is said and what's done. It's a lot of different things that you said, and I keep them. I keep them little quotes and stuff that you say. And those sound bites that you say, I keep that to inspire me. Oh, I always pick up, up different things with different people. And it's a lot, man, that uh, uh, that it keeps me going, man. Mm -hmm. And you know what, man? You, you, you know what? You mentor young boys. And I would like to know is being a mentor, not just talking to talk, but you talk to talk and walk to walk. Mm -hmm. Why are young boys in the going through the dilemma of becoming punkified or womanized in this society. What are some of the problems? What are some of the aspects? And how did you, how do you deal with them? Dear? Uh, because they know I'm not afraid of them. You know, I'm not afraid of them. Uh, they respect me. I get the ultimate respect. I don't talk down on them. And um, I understand them. I listen. Now listen, now I come with another another idea or some things that they there's things that they're not gonna know that I'm gonna know because I'm I'm older and I'm more experienced. Mm -hmm. So I can go and I can help and not only just talk it, but I can show you. A person can say something to you and that's that. But if you show that person, they'll actually know it because they see it now. Mm -hmm. They can feel it. And that's how I, you know, show and teach. And they and they teach me. And I learned mm -hmm. from, from them. Mm -hmm. you know, I learned from them. Can you share, can you share without giving a name, because I know this is confidentiality, about, can you share experience that a young man went through that you helped by giving them, giving them, giving him or her knowledge? Okay. Uh, um, one Sunday, I was, I, was, I was going to Walgreens to get me some orange juice. It was a Sunday morning, mm -hmm. about 9 o'clock. And um, I'm leaving out of Walgreens. I'm standing up on 95th and uh, King Drive mm -hmm. waiting for the light to change. Mm -hmm. And it was an older gentleman. He was dressed impeccable. It looks like he was going to church. 
It was a young man there standing there right next to him. And I'm standing behind them. Uh, he had his pants sagging down, right? So I'm standing there, and the older gentleman tells the young man, he said, young man, why don't you pull your pants up? Mm -hmm. And so the young man looked at him, and he said, I'll pull my pants up when you put your pants on. <laughs> and I was like, wow, what is that? And the older guy, he just kind of got quiet, and we walked across the street. In the light chain, we walked across the street, and the older gentleman walked on the other side of the street because he had to wait for the bus. But the young guy, he was walking in the same direction I was walking in. So I hurried up and caught up with him. And I was like, man, what was that? You know, mm -hmm. what, what, what was that all about? He said, older people always talk down on us. Mm -hmm. I said, don't, they don't show us nothing, don't do anything for us. Them. All they're going to do is talk bad about us. Mm -hmm. So I asked him, I said, why do you wear your pants sagging? Yes. He said, I don't know. I was like, wow. I said, you know what sagging your pants came from? Mm -hmm. He said, no. I said, it came from slavery. Yes. I said, during the time of slavery, they used to call the female slaves winches oh. and call the male slaves bucks. Mm -hmm. And what they used to do to instill fear, they used to rape the male slaves. Yes. The boys and the, and the males. Mm -hmm. Now just imagine you sitting there seeing your father get raped and screaming. Now he's supposed to be the strongest head in your family and you seeing that happen to him. That's going to instill fear in your family. Mm -hmm. That's what they call buck breaking. They yes. broke the buck. And when they did that, they had him sag his pants under his behind <laughs> and walk around the plantation to let the other slave masters know that this buck has been broken. Mm -hmm. And also, when they hang the slaves, they would hang the male slaves and pull their pants down under their behind. Mm -hmm because they was fascinated by the male genitalia and the female used to cut out her vagina and put it in jars. Wow. So those things, that, that's what was happening. Mm -hmm. And so when you do that for 400 plus years, people take on that and not even know why they're doing it. Just like when you get on the bus, everybody goes to the back, even though there's seats in the front, because that's been instilled in you and you don't know why. Well, you know what he, the guy did? What? He pulled his pants up and tightened his belt. Yes, yes. Yeah. You know what, Minister Ben, um, the young people that it, you are mentoring to on your show, how have they affected your show? How have they been a, become an integral part of your show? And you have benefited, and they have benefited. Wow, these young, these young men, mm -hmm. man, they, they had asked to be What's on. What's their names? Um, uh, Am Amron Hammond, mm -hmm. uh, Dante, and Dominic. Mm -hmm. These are young fellas, man. I can tell you about them. They are amazing dudes. They're, they're college educated. They're very ambitious. And I said, all you need, just come on my platform, do whatever. And, they, and, they're, and then what they do also is they give me... Uh, they interject youth into my program. But see, here's the thing with me. I'm not an old man, get off my lawn, because I know a lot of the older fellas my age, all they're doing is drinking hot toddy and they're going to go to bed and, and that's it. Mm -hmm. uh, but they are, it, it is, it is, it is um, refreshing for those young guys. And I, I, I love them guys. And they keep me on my toes. And your platform is getting more and more and more followers because you have the, the youth, aid the of the youth. young people that have ideas That's right. that are not old and decrepit. Yes. I'm not going to say decrepit like me. Yeah. Like me. I'm, I'm an older gentleman. So that they just they benefit, but you're benefiting them by giving them wisdom sure. and not feeling threatened or afraid that they may grow to know more than you. No. That is beautiful. No. Okay. I, you know what, Minister Ben? Um, I would like to ask you. I, I know that you are Muslim, and you know what? What is your Islamic name, brother? Malik Abdul Rahim. Okay. How has how has Islam impacted your life? Oh man. why was it the right choice and the right decision man. for you over all of the different religions from Buddhism, Jehovah Witness? Yeah. Why how's it impacted? It, it, first off, it made it more simple for me. Because I had a question I always had questions when I was younger. 
and why is it like this and why is it like that? I went to a Catholic school mm -hmm. and um, one day we were on a field trip with a Catholic school and we're driving by a Baptist church. Yes, sir. And the, 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 oh, yeah. the, the, the children on the bus say, um, oh, y'all hold y'all nose. And say, y'all hold y'all nose. We're going by a Baptist church and they stink. And I'm sitting there like, my grandmother is a Baptist. She goes to a Baptist church and my grandmother don't stink. Yes, sir. So I, it was confusing for me. Mm -hmm. And it made me start looking more and more into it. And I said, well, this is real. Conf it was confusing for me. But when I embraced Islam, it felt it felt right for me. It, it felt right for me. It felt simple for me. It, it was just it was and I'm not putting any other religion down because um, because all the religions really have to me that God is above all of us. That's that's what I that's what I believe. And so, but, 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 but yeah. that just but that just works for me. It helped me and my, my mentality and everything else. I believe if, in a lot of instances, if it wasn't for Islam, I'd been to whoop a whole lot of people's ass. <laughs> <laughs> let's, just, let's, just keep, let's just keep it you like know, what that. What you're saying is you're exhibiting attributes of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Is that what you're doing? You're exhibiting some of those attributes, right? Some of those attributes, yes, because of uh, we, we know about the way of life and and then what, is, what is told to us in uh, the, our Holy Scriptures. And then the examples of other people that I've seen and how they conduct themselves and everything else, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And, and th th this is a good thing. Do you belong to a, pro pro uh, a masjid, uh, a place of worship that you would like to recommend somebody go to? I could name three, but I'm well, interviewing you. Yeah, well, you know, I, I, of course, I've been over at Mosque El Farouk. I've been over there before. M Mosque El Farouk is yeah. in Chicago yeah. at, what, what in Stony Island? Uh, about 80, uh, about eight, 91st of Stony 91st of Stony Island. Yeah. So that, that you, rec you would recommend. If you, a place of worship, you, well, what you got to do is feel comfortable if you're there. Wherever, mosque, wherever place of worship that you go to, you have to be comfortable. You know, I've been to a few that I didn't feel too comfortable or felt welcome. But you find a place that you, uh, you feel comfortable and become, just like a people, people go to a church, they find their church home and say, this is where I feel good. And so. Well, uh, I'm going to put in a plug for Marcy the Alpha T at 47th and Woodlawn. I'm going to say. Go there <laughs> if you want to learn about Islam. Mm -hmm. I think we got we got five minutes, mm -hmm. but you see, Islam is the most important thing in 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 life to you. Is yes, Islam. yes, yes, okay. yes, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. That that is uh, it is it's not my religious way of life. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, it's a way of life. Okay, now get now getting back to your show. What? How can people become? a guest on your show and what topics do you feel that you will you will you will cover in the future and how do they find it just go to um um go on youtube go to minister ben willis podcast leave comments and leave you know anything that you would like to uh for me to talk about um if you'd like to be on the show just leave me a message and you can get to what is the telephone number for the, do, do you have an email address with a telephone number that they can call? They can go to WillisMinisterBen at gmail.com. You got a Facebook account too, don't you? Yeah. But they can go to they can go to the email. Okay. Yeah. And your, what is your email address again? WillisMinisterBen at gmail.com. Okay. And I and you know what? Not only do I encourage people to do that, I encourage you to have him on as a guest on your show because he can bring some enlightenment and he can deliver a message to where perhaps you may not be able to deliver that message in the same way. Mm -hmm. So you know what, this has indeed been a pleasure and you know what, I believe in networking. Yes, sir. And you know what, you believe in networking. You yes, cannot sir. live in this world by yourself. Can't do it. You know, you have any finishing comments? You know, I, again, like I said, I want to thank you for uh, inviting me on the show. It's always a pleasure, Brother Cliff. It's always a pleasure to talk to you, see you. 
it is just uh, let's continue doing great things, man. Mm. That's all you know. That's all we can do. No, wait a minute. You said your is start about your Islamic name is Malik Abdul Rahim. Okay, and brother, uh, brother gave who gave who gave you who gave you dawah to come to Islam, brother? What's the brother's name? Mark Shearer. Okay. The Muslim, Brother Mark. Uh, the Muslim Journal. So yes. I want to say assalamu alaikum to everybody. You're looking at the Underground Railroad, and you know what? Share this on YouTube, Facebook, and all these social media platforms. And you know what? This has been a this has been a pleasure to have Minister Ben. I have learned a lot. I've learned a lot. My disagreements. Yes, sir. And I appreciate it. I appreciate you it. You helped to too, make man. me better. Assalamu alaikum. Okay. Did you know that the United States was once on the gold standard? In 1971, President Richard Nixon made a monumental decision that changed the course of our economy forever. On August 15, 1971, President Nixon announced that the United States would no longer convert dollars into gold. This move marked the end of the gold standard and the birth of fiat money. But what exactly is fiat money? It's simple. Fiat money is a form of currency that is not backed by a physical commodity like gold. Instead, its value is derived from the trust and confidence placed in the issuing government. Fiat money allowed the U.S. government to have greater control over the economy. They could print more money without being limited by the amount of gold reserves. This flexibility came with advantages but also significant risks. One of the major consequences of abandoning the gold standard was the increased risk of inflation. With no fixed value tied to gold, the government had more freedom to print money, leading to a devaluation of the currency and rising prices for goods and services. Another impact of fiat money was the surge in speculative financial activities, such as stock trading and speculation. Without the constraints of the gold standard, the economy became more dependent on market forces and speculation, leading to greater economic volatility. While the abandonment of the gold standard had its drawbacks, it also allowed for more flexibility in managing the economy during times of crisis. During economic recessions, governments could increase the money supply to stimulate growth and avoid deflation. However, the debate on the long-term effects of fiat money continues to this day. Some argue that it has led to excessive debt and financial instability, while others believe it is essential for a modern economy to function. The decision to abandon the gold standard in 1971 marked a turning point in U.S. economic history. It shaped our modern monetary system and had far-reaching consequences. Understanding the impact of fiat money is crucial for anyone seeking to comprehend the complex nature of our economy. 